Before we jump into the show, I want to let you know that Podcast Branding Academy is now open. This is my online school for podcasters. That's right. For any podcasters, new or old, looking to learn the latest approaches to branding, marketing, and audience growth, we offer group coaching through an easy monthly membership. Don't have a podcast yet? We've got you covered too. Grab our free Podcasting 101 Starter Kit. Go to podcastbrandingacademy.com. Before July 1st, for our founding members discount, you'll also get live trainings, video tutorials, workbooks, one-on-one coaching, and more. You don't want to miss this. Head to podcastbrandingacademy.com. Brands on Brands. Hey, everybody. This week, we're going to talk about social proof for your personal brand. Check it out. In a world where content is king, and your reputation is your brand. How do you build a brand that matters? Welcome to Brands on Brands, a home for those that think different and push their boundaries. This is where branding that matters lives. Now, here is your host, Brandon Berkmeyer. Hey, hey, what's up? Welcome to Brands on Brands. I'm Brandon Berkmeyer, your personal branding coach. And today we are diving into social proof for personal brands. If this is your first time listening to the show. Make sure to hit that subscribe button or follow us along and make sure that you also get a chance to go to the website, brandsonbrands.com and check out what we have going on there. Join our mailing list so you get all of our tips every week. But today, today's topic of social proof is one of my favorites. I came across this topic first when I was starting to think about leaving corporate and was reading all the things I could get my hands up about entrepreneurship. And one of the books that came across my desk was Tim Ferriss's Four Hour Work Week. And I remember thinking, man, he has a couple of things really figured out that I really love from the book. One was his approach to really systemizing and outsourcing, like systemizing his processes and then outsourcing his work. Uh, I love that for any content creator out there. But the other piece that really stood out, which is what we're talking about this week, is his approach to social proof, which is really what are you doing so that when people find, like look for you online, they find things that tip them off that you are credible, right? What are those authority points that they're going to find online? And the thing that I think is, super useful and interesting is obviously to start with your social profiles. Like when you Google yourself and you've done, you haven't created any content, usually the first thing they're going to find is a social profile. For most of you, it's going to be LinkedIn, right? Type in your name into Google, see what happens. For most of you, if you haven't had any PR in your life, your LinkedIn profile will be the first thing that they find. And after that, it might even be your Facebook page you know, at the top and then possibly Instagram, those couple of things are going to pop up first uh, or Twitter. So like usually it's your social profiles, right? But if you have created a website that is built around your personal brand, hopefully that's in those top three or four as well, if not first, because you've built it to actually have your name embedded in it on the about pages and whatever else. And it's the most relevant place that people, if they're looking for you, can find you. And what you wanted them to see is your website and all the information that you've curated about yourself, right? Uh, that's super helpful. Now, when you're developing social proof, other than making sure that those things are standardized and corrected and refreshed, uh, the thing that's really helpful is them seeing your name from other people, right? Because it's easy to, to say that you're great, but having other people say you're great is huge. Right. So we can start with the idea of testimonials. Like, are you collecting testimonials? Do you have a Yelp site or do you have testimonials on your LinkedIn page or testimonials on your website? Like having testimonials of customers or people that just support you uh, is great. And this is why selfie culture is so huge, right? Like how many people are taking selfies with their heroes and posting them online? Part of it is like, they want that social proof that I've been with this person, right? So being featured with other people is part of the approach. So where can you do that? And if you're in a particular business, like in coaching or something like that, one of the strongest ways to do that is to be featured either as a podcast guest on someone else's show or as a blog writer, featured author on someone else's blog. 
And this is the kinds of things that when you do those, you get those opportunities, you now can add those to your website as well and say, as seen on CNN or as featured by Forbes or whatever it might be. So starting to apply to get those uh, credits to write content for them and then get credited for that is huge. Um, but podcasts are like the new PR. So you getting a guesting feature on a bunch of shows can very quickly build your social proof. And as they Google you, they'll also now find these interviews that other people brought you on their show and highlighted you as the expert, right? These are things that maybe they don't generate for you a lot of search traffic, but for the people you meet in real life that you network with, and then they consider you, they are going to search for you on Google. It happens every day. So you having things there that are these little authority points that give you more credit than just a social media profile are huge. So you want them to find blog articles that you've written or blog articles that feature you. You want them to find podcasts that you guessed it on. Uh, absolutely. And if you've spoken on some stages, hopefully that can be featured as well, right? Whether you feature it yourself on your website or it pops up because you are named as a speaker, that would be huge. Those are just a couple of places you can start. And you would have to be the one to get out there, be proactive and say, what can I be doing to be featured in more places so that that pops up? Uh, and if nothing else, creating content and putting your content out there as blog posts and podcasts is going to help to build that up. And if that's the only approach you have right now, then the best thing you could do is bring guests onto your show, feature guests on your show that have their own authority, that have their own followings and feature them as guests on your show where they're the expert, but even the association of you doing a show together where you're the interviewer and they're the interviewee, just the association of them being on your show will start to ratchet up your social proof. You're like, yes, I interviewed this thought leader in my industry, this author in my industry, whatever that might be. Now you have a relationship with them or a perceived relationship because they've been on your show. So these are just some of the tools that can help you move along and upgrade your status as people are looking to find out like, what are the cues that prove to me that this person is an authority in my space, that they're a thought leader in my space, or that they're just a trustworthy partner that I can consider working with. And all that social proof is something that doesn't just happen. You have to actively persist and find out ways to do that for yourself. And then beyond that, you can get into the PR route. You know, how do you get featured with new things that you're doing in the different PR spaces? Uh, how do you, you know, get featured as, as authors on popular blogs? But this is where I would start. And if you can move that along, I think your personal brand will be better for it. Again, this is a great month. This is what I think of as the refresh month. I want to be thinking of what are all the things I have out there in the online space that are telling my story for me? And what can I do to make them better so that when I have these conversations with potential customers, I have the online proof to back it up that helps support my story. And social proof is that key. People love to know that there is there is some trust there and they need to see the proof of authority online. So that's my lesson for today. Again, if you guys have a chance, go to brandsonbrands.com and there you also find links to the Podcast Branding Academy, which is my online school for podcasting and podcast branding. So if you are looking to become a podcaster or, or you are already podcasting, we have something for you there at the podcastbrandingacademy.com. Otherwise, just keep on listening. Make sure you're following the show and subscribe to the show. And we'll keep bringing you new thoughts and opinions every week. All right, guys, I appreciate you listening and we'll catch you next time. You've just taken your marketing knowledge to another level with this episode of Brands on Brands. But we have plenty more ways to help you build a brand that matters. Head over to brandsonbrands.com for resources, as well as access to our blogs, videos, and exclusive coaching sessions with your host. Be sure to visit brandsonbrands.com.